It's not there just for, to make yourself beautiful. It's out of compassion for someone else. That's okay. Is health drinks, myelin horlicks, tea and coffee considered food? It's all right to have vitamin C drinks. You know what vitamin C is? Vitamin caffeine. <laughs> coffee and tea. You can have coffee and tea. It's not considered food. It's considered drinks. That's okay. Usually in some monasteries we say any milk drinks is not allowable because we're strict. In our tradition we say no milk drinks. In other monasteries they say milk is allowable. So when I'm over here, I follow the tradition of being strict on myself, being compassionate on others. That's a wonderful way to practice. Be compassionate to others. Be strict to yourself. So I don't take milk myself, but I allow you please take some milk. And if it's just that oval teen, it's, you know, have that oval teen. If it makes your meditation better, then take it. But don't go on and sort of start taking, okay, you know, we take a bit of rice. We have rice water. Rice water is the same as oval teen, isn't it? Rice water. Same thing really, just like rice milk. They call it rice milk. And then the rice milk gets thicker and thicker and thicker. <laughs> now what's the difference between rice milk and rice? You might as well take rice. And when you take rice, well, you know, you might as well have it fried and have it as noodles. And then, well, you could have something. It's only just a, you know, a few little vegetables on top. <laughs> and by the end, you have a three-course meal. <laughs> okay. Dear Ajahn, question. When we experience sleepiness or when the mind wanders off, do we return to observe our breathing or leave the mind as it is? Thank you. Be radical. Leave the mind as it is. Allow sleepiness to be. I think, is it tomorrow? I think I'm giving a talk on the hindrances. So I'll leave that question till tomorrow, uh, tonight, isn't it? Tonight, hindrances. So you'll find that answer tonight. So, but the thing is, when I'm giving the talk tonight, please don't be sleepy. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll ask the question again. To please explain the difference between meditation and contemplation. I've done it already. Must or might be in a meditative mode to get into contemplation. Yep. Otherwise, you're just thinking. Oh, next question. Here we go. Please kindly answer the following question. What are the different types of meditation available for daily practice? All meditations are available for daily practice. Everything is. Is it absolutely necessary to do walking meditation before sitting meditation? No. You can do sitting meditation between walking meditation and walking meditation before sitting meditation. The only thing which is absolutely necessary is you don't do both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we let <laughs> we, we let go by meditating or we let go before we can meditate if it is the latter then how do we do so ok you let go of answering questions like this and then you can meditate <laughs> next question are the limiters always bright for everyone? What if it is a cloudy for some? Does this also mean that there is a lot of taint? Yes, if it's cloudy, you're not bright, you haven't got enough energy. So make your limiter bright. It gets brighter as it goes along. That's just the way it is. Could you please advise if a person wishes to distribute or donate his or her lifelong savings, which is the way that gives the greatest yield? This question arises in line with your advice on the best but simple way a Buddhist burial could be carried out. Yeah, it's just give your uh, donations where you think it will make the most benefit for the world and where it brings you happiness. Because this is one of the things when the Buddha uh, said for monks, if someone asks you where should we give our donations, the monks should never say, give it to my monastery, give it to my project. Because that's like selfishness. The monks should always answer, as I'm answering now, to the lay person who asked that question, give it to where your mind finds the most happiness. So we can't say, basically, but it gives you a way of finding out. Where it will be, produce the greatest benefit? Next question. Since Buddha's consciousness no, long, no longer have supports of other four aggregates, consciousness just stop and not extinct. Hence, we can't say whether the noble one Buddha still exists or non-exists, either exists or non-exists. Is this the right view? Thank you. Okay, that Five Kanda process, which one day we called the Buddha many centuries ago. That five Kanda process is completely stopped, extinguished, no longer manifest in the world. But does that mean the Buddha is no longer here? 
Sometimes the Christians say, the Buddha is dead, no longer here, but Jesus is alive. Believe in Jesus. And I say, no, the Buddha is still alive. The Buddha is still, you know, the Buddha is still alive? Absolutely, 100%. We heard that before. The Buddha is still living. Because <laughs> the Buddha said, he who sees the Dhamma sees the Buddha. He who sees the Buddha sees the Dhamma. If the Dhamma is to be seen, you can see the Buddha. You can see the Buddha here in Chimpaka Buddhist Lodge today. When you see the Dhamma, you see the Buddha. What he meant there was very profound and wonderful. It's not the person you worship, it's the teachings. It's the teachings were the Buddha, not the body, not the five candles, not this being with this um, snail-like hair on the top of his head. That wasn't the Buddha, that was the, the vehicle which the Dhamma, known as the Buddha, manifested in. And it carried it. That's why we don't have guru traditions in Buddhism. If you like Ajahn Brahm's teaching, it's not this body, it's the teachings which are important. So we don't worry about bodies, about five candors. It's the Dhamma which is important. So yeah, the Buddha is still alive. Because the Dhamma is still alive. So, you can actually put on your cars, on these little stickers, Buddha lives. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> How do we draw the line to be contented and easily satisfied and not be ambitious and seize opportunities to advance oneself materially and in this world? Okay, be contented to be ambitious. Be satisfied to actually to work hard. In other words, do your duties in the world. But don't expect them to be successful. So I work hard as a monk. I work so hard as a teacher, but I'm contented. If you all go to the kitchen and get all the rotten tomatoes and start throwing them and say, Ajahn Brahm, there's the worst talk we've ever heard. Of all the monks I've ever seen, you're the worst. Boo! I'll still be contented and easily satisfied. Because it'd be great if no one liked my teachings. If you thought I was the most boring, worst teacher ever, oh, that'd be so wonderful. I could go back to my monastery and be peaceful. <laughs> Easy. So, I'm contented if I can manage to give great talks, then it's wonderful. I can do service to everybody. I can give. But if I'm not, if it doesn't work, I'm a bad teacher, I'm even just as happy. So you work hard not expecting any results. That's called being contented and easily satisfied. So in your business, which you work at, work hard. It's not just for you, it's for all your employees. It's part of the cogs of society, of the nation. Without you, there would be something missing in life. So you work hard, it's not just for the money, it's for service to society. It's for service to the people you work with. Work is not just a salary. And the salary is not just the numbers which you put in the bank. It's like ability to look after your family, to look after your health, and to make merit in the world. This is what we get money for. To look after ourselves, our family, our country, and also our world, and also our spiritual life as well. Supporting the temples and whatnot. This is why we work hard. So work hard, but don't expect you have to be successful. I know some people, they work so hard, and they... They just about manage to survive. They don't know why other people, whatever they do, turns to gold straight away. They become incredibly rich. So it's really not depending on how hard you work. Lots of other things involved there, like karma from the past. So your job is to be satisfied. Be content with what you have. You work hard, and if you're successful, you get lots of money, lots of wealth. Be satisfied with that. And share it around. If you work hard, you don't get so much. Be satisfied with that and share the little you have around. That's all you can do. Can be contented and easily satisfied doesn't mean you do nothing. It means you do your duties. Your duties as a husband, your duties as a wife, your duties as a, as a son or daughter of your parents. You do your duties to your ancestors. You do your duties to your children. You do your duties to your teachers, to your religion. You also do your duties to your nation.
When you do your duties, you give them everything you've got. And that's the difference between being content and easily satisfied and being lazy. Remember the thing I told last night about the snake and the tiger and being in between. When it's nothing to do, just enjoy the honey. When it's nothing to do, climb out and escape. Okay, I think that's... I've gone over half past, but I've got most of the questions done. I've only got a few left. So I think I've made a profit today. And actually, I'm very contented and easily satisfied with all of the questions I've answered today. Even though I didn't complete them all, I am easily satisfied. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. Is there any questions from the floor before we start the interviews? Going, going, gone. Okay, so you may be going, going, gone as well. May you go from samsara, going, going deeper into meditation until you're gone, really gone, far gone, gone into nibbana. Who knows? You just had playtime for an hour and a half. Now your mind will be fresh, living with Dhamma, with inspiration. It's time to go deep inside, to watch the breath. Remember like a little baby? Don't drop the baby. And then you go to deep meditation. Have a wonderful time. Okay, see you later.